Valentine's Day. And what a backdrop we have here in the Adirondacks for a love story on Valentine's Day. We have Heart Lake, a body of water nestled at the base of New York's highest peaks, named, as we learned yesterday, for a love unrequited. Today, the story of a romance that did blossom into a lasting love on the shores of Heart Lake. That's today's story of the day. Support for Story of the Day comes from Long Run Wealth, an SEC-registered investment advisor in Lake Placid, providing comprehensive wealth management, retirement, and financial planning solutions. LongRunWealth.com. And from SciTech Business Solutions, training and consulting services to help businesses grow. More information at CITEC.org. Hey, I'm David Summerstein. It's Wednesday, February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day for those who celebrate, of course. First up, a Plattsburgh man is accused of threatening the local hospital. As Kara Chapman reports, the arrest yesterday may have prevented a mass shooting. Police say they got a tip that 52-year-old Robert Thibodeau of Plattsburgh was armed and en route to Champlain Valley Physicians Hospital at about 9 a.m. Tuesday morning. The caller was a concerned family member who said Thibodeau was recently fired from the hospital and had allegedly made comments about going there to harm people. Police pulled over a car matching a description of Thibodeau's just blocks away from the hospital. They detained him and searched his vehicle. Police say they found a loaded 12-gauge semi-automatic shotgun, plus two 10-round magazines and extra ammunition. According to hospital president Michelle LeBeau, CVPH didn't go on lockdown because the arrest was made shortly after the threat was made known to police. Thibodeau was charged with second-degree criminal possession of a loaded firearm. Police say they completed search warrants of his vehicle and home to seize any additional guns. Thibodeau was arraigned in city court and sent to Clinton County Jail on $250,000 cash bail or a $500,000 bond. His next court appearance is Thursday. Kara Chapman, North Country Public Radio. New York State has reached an agreement with the Nature Conservancy to permanently protect more than 14,000 acres in the Adirondacks. The state says the $9.3 million deal will provide new public recreational access along 10 miles of the Racket River Corridor, as well as Fallensby Pond. It will also establish a first-of-its-kind freshwater research preserve. State Department of Environmental Conservation Commissioner Basil Segos says it's the largest addition to protected lands in the Adirondacks in more than a decade. Paddlers know this area well, of course, the, Nas- the Northern Forest Canoe Trail. Uh, it will now have uh, camping sites, new camping sites along the river. Former logging roads will uh, provide easy hikes as well as other non-motorized activities. Uh, fishing along the shoreline, hunting in new remote locations, uh, and some hunt camps that are there now will remain. The Nature Conservancy purchased the parcel in 2008. The river easement is adjacent to the DEC's 275,000-acre High Peaks Wilderness Complex. The Adirondack Lodge at Heart Lake is fertile ground for love stories. There are over 50 seasonal employees who work there each summer. So there's a lot of Heart Lake romance and a lot of Heart Lake heartbreak. Yesterday, we heard the historic and tragic love story of Henry Van Hovenberg and Josephine Schofield, which led to the name Heart Lake. Today, on Valentine's Day, a modern and happier Heart Lake tale. Amy Feireisel has our story. Dana Libby and Jeremy Utz both grew up far from the Adirondack Mountains, she in Virginia, he in Ohio. They both came to the area on somewhat of a whim after seeing seasonal jobs posted by the Adirondack Mountain Club. Dana was on a mission to work all over the country. I was doing seasonal work, and once I got here, I kind of got smitten, and it derailed the whole plan to go to other places because I liked it here so much. Jeremy came looking for a change of scenery and a more relaxed pace of life. I randomly just applied for a job at the Adirondack Mountain Club and was hired, and I had to look up what the Adirondacks was. I had never heard of it. I didn't know it existed. In 2016, they both found themselves working at the Adirondack Lodge on Heart Lake. Dana had a few seasons on Lodge crew behind her. Jeremy was the Lodge chef. Romance didn't blossom immediately, but a connection did. And just started as really fast friends, had a lot in common, taste in music and sense of humor and wanting to get out and play in the mountains. So we were friends for a couple of years first. And with the high peaks as a backdrop, that friendship grew deeper. 
Well, the first hike we ever went on together was, was close. Yeah, a winter summit of Mount Van Hovenberg snowshoe hike in February, which was really lovely. I remember a pivotal moment. The first time we ever really spoke outside of work was literally right outside of the building in the rain, standing under the little eave, and uh, we talked about photography. They kept in touch during the off-seasons, and two years later, Dana moved to the Adirondacks full-time. She rented a tiny cabin in Lake Placid. And I was alone there for maybe about a week and a half before Jeremy was hanging out there a lot of the time. Jeremy was working as the property manager of the Johnsbrook Lodge, and he'd come stay with her on his days off. And then it just seemed all of a sudden like he was living there too. I had this idea that I was like, I'm gonna live in this little cabin in the woods all by myself and start my new life. But you were a part of the picture pretty immediately. That tiny cabin was good training because the pair have shared a lot of close quarters since. A small apartment in Saranac Lake, a travel camper van, and a shed-like cabin on Hart Lake. Jeremy says the mountains are their favorite playground and a place where the relationship has grown. So I think a strong part of our bond comes from sharing really intense, beautiful, scary um, moments together in the mountains to have a A partner in the mountains that you trust with your life is similar to having a partner at home that you trust with your life. They got engaged in 2020, in the early months of the coronavirus pandemic. Dana proposed after a short hike to Copper's Pond in the Wilmington Notch for Jeremy's birthday. We were out there for a little while and I was stalling and Jeremy was like, oh, we should probably go. And I was like, well, wait. And I pulled out a ring and I just kind of was holding it and not saying anything. And you were like, well, that's pretty. What's that for? And I was like, oh, do you you want to marry me? (laughs) And he said, yeah. (laughs) I was very surprised. I really liked the ring, but I was really surprised. I was not expecting it. He was so surprised because he had been in the process of buying a ring to propose to Dana. It was easy for me because I already had the ring picked out afterwards to just go ahead and order it. (laughs) (laughs) Four years later, the pair is still engaged. We are not legally married, but we are married married in our mind. And every time that we set to have a wedding, we get distracted by something else cool that we want to do or some other sort of trip that requires planning and money. Like buying a camper van and traveling around the country. And when they got back, they moved into the shed on Hart Lake. And they had an aha moment. Having all of our belongings in this little space. I remember that being the moment when we realized that we had gone on all these adventures across the country and seen all these amazing things and realized that, like, we wanted to be here. Being like, wow, Utah's amazing, New Mexico's amazing, but also just really wanting to come home and not feeling like we could find this anywhere else. Like the Adirondacks are just super special and even all the cool places, this is still the coolest. So again, instead of planning a wedding, they put a down payment down on a house in Saranac Lake, which they moved into a few months ago. They're both working for the Adirondack Mountain Club again, helping new visitors to find their love for these mountains. And they say the wedding will come. Spring, spring. I think spring. Maybe in the backyard. Spring in the backyard. (laughs) Amy Fireisel, North Country Public Radio. This love story was suggested by Tom Duffy through NCPR's Texan Club. In fact, all the love stories we've been airing the last week come from your suggestions at the Texan Club. So join the club. You'll only hear from us about once a month, and you'll help shape our journalism on fun stuff and serious stuff. Text the word NEW to 315-978-6277. Text the word NEW to 315-978-6277. Music today by Lost in Beijing and Martha Gallagher, both a very romantic keen. I'm David Summerstein, North Country Public Radio.